All right, so we're going to talk about the 50-yard zero today. Uh, we'll talk about zeroing in general, but this chart is actually set up for the 50-yard zero. Uh, if you check out the article that we posted on the website, the practical discussion about AR-15-0, discusses four different types of zero that are most commonly seen or I've seen uh, put on a rifle, the seven-yard zero, 25-yard zero, 50-yard zero, and the 100-yard zero. Like this one in particular, the 50-yard zero is the one I use. I prefer the 50 yard zero just because I choose something that is within the realm of where I'm going to operate. 50 yard zero puts you within two inches of point of aim from 10 yards all the way out to 225 yards. Okay, so just a real quick thing about the 50 yard zero we have up here to break down this, all these numbers are in the article as well as uh, the contrast and comparisons for the seven. 25 and 100. The 50 yard zero, when we get the shooting, we're going to shoot at 10 yards to do the battlefield zero that we discussed in the article at 10 yards. Your impacts will be two inches below your point of aim. Now, there's some caveats with that. We're talking about a 14 and a half inch or a 16 inch barrel. This, this will be close to the correct amount even with a shorty, but as you get to 50 or even expanded distances, uh, the uh, the arc will be a little bit greater because you're losing some more velocity, but it's more affected at this far end than at the close end, where the velocities are generally the same when they exit the motion. Okay? Or not as affected. They're not the same, but they're not as affected. Alright, so 10 yards will be 2 inches below 25 yards. If you're shooting at 25 yards or a 50 yard zero, you'd be 1 and a quarter inches below your point of aim. These are examples of what we call in the article the battlefield zero. I just want to get a get on paper instead of going to 50 yards. This way I know when I shoot at 50 yards, I'm gonna actually be impacting in the area of my point of aim. I might have to make some fine adjustments, but at least I'll be close. Uh, at 100 yards with a 50 yard zero, you're gonna be an inch and a half above your point of aim. At 150 yards, you're gonna be at max ordinance, which is the highest point of the arc of your bullet, and that's one and three quarter inches, still below two inches, and then we travel on, we're going to come back and interrupt our line of sight for our repeat zero at 220 yards. It's about 220 yards, it could be a little less or more, but generally speaking, that's what it will be. If you're running 5.56 five, versus 223, you're going to get different velocities out of the muzzle, so that number will change, but these numbers will be closer to the correct amount. Just a quick discussion about MOA and what a minute of angle is, not to get into the weeds about it. There's a lot of videos to get into the weeds about MOA. I just want you to understand is how it's going to relate to zeroing. One minute of angle is worth one inch at 100 yards. It's actually a little bit of a bigger number than that, but for practical purposes, it's one inch at 100 yards. At 50 yards is a half an inch, at 25 yards a quarter inch, at 10 yards an eighth of an inch, about eighth of an inch. I say about because it's actually 12 and a half yards is an eighth of an inch, but since we're going to be working at the 10 yard mark, I want you to understand what number we're using. Most aim points, EOTech, uh, Trigicon, Halo Sun, their adjustments are in half MOA adjustment so each click is worth a half minute of angle what's a half minute of angle worth at 100 yards well it's a half an inch all right at 10 yards it's about a 16th of an inch okay so when we're getting up there we're doing our 10 yard zero and we have to make adjustments we have to keep in mind that each one of those clicks only worth a 16th of an inch because we're so close where if we come back to 100 Minutes of angle being what they are, and at your deviation, you get more bang for your buck for each click, so you're getting a half an inch per click. But we're going to be shooting at the 10 and then at the 50. All right? So, what's that mean for adjustments? If I had to make a one inch adjustment with these half MOA uh, values per click on my aim point, for instance, at 100 yards, two clicks, it would take for me to get one inch of movement. At 10 yards, it would take 16 clicks to get one inch of movement. 25 yards, you need eight. 50, you need four to get one inch, right, because of the value that you're getting. All right, so that's that's it for the red dots, a 50 yard zero. 
when we get into working with iron sights, iron sights don't have such round, neat numbers. All right? These tables, again, are in, in the book. The whole point of understanding what these numbers are is it's going to save you some a lot of ammo instead of chasing things around, and it's going to save you time when you get out there and get ready to zero. And more valuable than saving you the ammo and the time is it's going to save you the frustration with chasing your groups around, trying to figure out how to get everything zeroed so you, uh, you'll be able to get it done quicker and get to doing what you want to do. So backup on your site, that's what this stands for, MOA values. Typically at M4, we're talking about the site radius on a, a standard mil spec M4. The front sight adjustment, every one of those notches is going to be 1.68 minutes of angle. The rear is going to be 0.68 minutes of angle, so that's the rear windage. On an M16A2, you're going to get 1.23 minutes of angle. So we're talking about the full length M16 battle rifle, not the short version the military uses now, the old style 90s. And the reason I include this, I get a lot of cops in my they're still showing up with M16A2s, M16A1s. They still have that full sight radius. And uh, there's a little bit of variance between the two, but uh, for the A2 is 1.23, and the rear windage is going to be a half minute of angle per click. Right. So what's that mean for you? Uh, 0.68 at 25 yards is a 17th of an inch. It's 0.34 inches at 50, and it's 0.68 inches at 100. 1.68. 0.42 at 25, 0.84 at 50, 1.68 at 100. Why don't I have the 10 yard in here? Uh, you just sub divide this in half to get the 10 yard, that's fine. Uh, usually I will zero my red dot at the 10 yard, then go to the 50, shoot the true zero at 50, and dial the irons in, and we'll show that in the zero, uh, what exactly we do to dial the irons in get them adjusted and what it should look like, and then you just shoot that and make the adjustments, but here's the values for you. Again, those will be in the article, all right? So that's the 50 yard zero and what it looks like and what we're gonna be doing when we get out there zero and what all this stuff means, all right? Okay, so we're up here at the target. We're gonna shoot a, a battlefield zero, so to speak, where we're gonna zero for 50 yards. Shooting from 10 yards, we're going to take into account the trajectory of the bullet in relation to our line of sight, which would be two inches below our point of aim. I'm going to mark it on the target. I'm just showing you how you could do it on a blank piece of paper. You don't even need a fancy target. I like to do it on an index card normally. So I'll mark my aim point with a black dot. Then my intended impact area with a red dot. Right. A little bit bigger so I could see them. So the black dot, so I could see it with the red aim point. Uh, the red dot, because when the impacts, the holes are made in cardboard, sometimes they appear black. So I want them to contrast against the red. When I punch out the red, then I'll know I'm good. But you can see. I'm two inches below my intended point of aim. <clears throat> and that's where it should be at 50 yards. The bull will be two inches below their point of aim if it's on the correct trajectory or the impact, point of aim, point of impact for 50 yards. So we'll go back to 10 yards. I'll fire a three round group, the best three round group I could shoot for the moment. And then we'll see how it shakes out for the adjustments. All right, so I'm up here. The 10 yard line i'm going to turn down my aim point to the lowest possible setting i could get it and still see the dot uh, this is so i don't get any splash over and i can really focus on what i need to focus on if you have the dot too bright you get a little bit of splash sometimes it, it can uh, mess up with your get a, a precise aim point all right so i'm going to zero this bcm uh, enhanced medium weight rifle i got an aim point uh, pro on it on top of it so We'll go ahead and zero it here. Just one thing I want to talk about before I do the zeroing is that this rifle, this particular rifle, is set up with the aim point in the wrong position. Okay, so before we get the zeroing, I'm going to move it back to the correct position. You don't want any of the rail touching. All right, this just happens to be someone else's rifle that I'm zeroing for them, 
and they're having zero problems and this is going to be the culprit. When I remove this ink point, you're gonna see probably some marring on the rail. That's from uneven tension and then you're not getting a consistent zero. So first thing I'm gonna do, I wanna fix this on camera. Take this off, I'm gonna move it back just one. You can move it back more if you want, but I generally I get over the ejection port. And just as I suspected, three clicks on the Pro. You can see right here that paint removal, that's from the mount being here and the, the rail still moves. Unless it's a monolithic rail, you're gonna have a problem if you have your your mount touching even that portion. It doesn't even have to be all the way over. Just that amount will move it. Remember, a minute of angle, you cannot see a minute of angle at the source, right? It's too small for you to notice it. So when you get back to distance, that's when it shows. And this is a few minutes of angle difference and you see the shift and it would continue to shift back and forth as, as you fired the gun. You just wouldn't get a consistent zero. So you gotta make sure you're not on the rail. All right, so we fixed that. Okay. So now we're going, we're gonna zero the red dot adjust it in and then after we're done zeroing the red dot i'll talk about dialing the irons in to the red dot okay so here we go okay go this real quick so I can use my hands when I talk okay so we're up at the target the group's a little looser than I wanted uh, shooting off that cone it's a little wobbly but we can still make adjustments from here so I got one two three four rounds in this spot I'm gonna mark it that's my first group and I'm gonna make adjustments how far below my intended Impact area am I about an inch and three quarters right and over about an inch and a quarter. So remember at 10 yards each click on an aim point, aim points have half minute of angle adjustment, so every click is worth a half minute of angle. A half minute of angle value at 10 yards is about a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, it's actually a little bit less than that because 12 yards is a sixteenth, but two yards is not that big of a deal. So if I don't want to do the math and figure out uh, what an inch and a quarter is and how many sixteenths it is, I could just count the hash marks. I have 16 here, 17, 18, 19, 20. I need to go to the left. And we have 16 and 12, that's 28. 28, I need to come up. I mark this, so if I make adjustments and the math isn't adding up, I either have to check and see if I was adjusting properly or there might be something mechanically wrong with the optic that I'm using and then the mass will tell me that, all right? So always mark your adjustments, mark your, your groups so you know which one the adjustments pertain to and then you can come back and figure it out. Just double check again. I got an inch and three quarters to come up and that comes to 16 and then another 12, 28 and an inch and a quarter from center of the group to move over. So that's 16 and four more, that's 20. 20 left and 28 up. We'll make that adjustment uh, right now, okay? Okay, so we need to go 20 
clicks to the left you look at the aim point you can see that the arrow denotes which way that the impacts are going to go not the sight itself and it says right counterclockwise since i got to go left i got to go opposite the arrow for 20 of those clicks it's 10. Twenty. I'll go a couple pass, a couple back. Give it a tap. I don't know if you need to do it. It just makes me feel better to do it, so I do it. Used to be a thing. Now I need to go twenty-eight up. So we look. The up arrow is counterclockwise, so I'm just going to follow the arrow for twenty-eight. Ten, twenty, twenty-eight. Two pass, two back. Taps. The wings back on. Okay, let's go down and look at it. It's pretty close. I'll probably just go with that that I have there. I got one round that's right at the right elevation and then two that are just below it. So what we'll do is we'll put up a, a uh, bullseye target. We'll go back to 50. We'll shoot the actual range that we're at and uh, see where we're at, what kind of adjustment we wanna make. You don't wanna spend too much time doing the true zero because that's just to get you on paper. If that's all you were gonna go with, and you weren't gonna shoot the true zero, I might spend a little bit more time, but since that's not what's gonna happen here, I'm gonna leave here, be close enough, go down, shoot the 50, and make my adjustments from there where I'm gonna get the most bang for my buck. Right. Okay, so we're down here at 50 yards. I'm now gonna shoot my true zero, which is I'm shooting at the distance that I'm actually zeroing the rifle. I'm gonna be shooting at this SR21 target. Uh, point of aim, point of impact, that's what we're gonna adjust to. I'm just going to shoot my best uh, three-round group we'll go with. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're up here from the 50, and now we're gonna make our adjustments. You can see I'm on the black, that 10 yard. Uh, I'm pretty close to the elevation I wanted. I was a little low here, I'm a little low here. <clears throat> Just gonna measure how far from center. So I need to come over another inch. And I need to come up an inch. So at 50 yards, now each one of these clicks is only going to be worth a quarter of an inch, where up at 10 yards, they're a sixteenth of an inch. One, one click at 100 is a half, so one click at 50 is half of a half, which is a quarter. So I got to come up an inch, that's four quarters, I got to come to the right one inch approximately one inch that is also four quarters so four up and 
four to the right. Make that adjustment. the arrow for up or up Follow the arrow for right, for the right. Passing it. Go back to 50, shoot another confirmation group to make sure that we're on. And then if we're on, that'll be it, and we'll talk about the iron. Okay. Okay, so we just fired our second three round group from 50 yards for our true zero. We have them right here. One, two, three. So point of aim, point of impact. I'm gonna take that for now. Could be a tighter group, but it's not. But I know I'm zero. I'll work on that other part later. This being loose doesn't have anything to do with whether or not I'm zero. Everything is consistently at the correct elevation and the correct windage. All right. So now we're going to dial in the irons to the red dot. But it's going to be hard to get on camera. I'll just draw up top. But I'll lift up my irons. Ideally, this works best when you have two people. Look through. Run the irons. You're going to dial that red dot in. So it is just below the edge of your front sight post. So, my front sight post, like that. I'll end up taking a sight adjustment tool and dialing that red dot in. Right to that point. Now, thinner your front sight post the better off you're gonna be when it comes to accuracy with your iron sights and adjusting your red dot in and making sure that it's it's centered uh, as far as whenever you do a diagnostic check running your your irons up looking through the irons seeing if the red dots moved or come out of zero if you dropped it something happened if been riding around in a car a lot there are all the cops out there and you're worried about it wobbling around or just as part of your everyday checklist when you pull out the rifle uh, you're checking that but I dial that red dot into here and then that's going to get do the same thing for me as opposed to zeroing the irons then dialing the red dot into the irons to do a quick zero you can do it the opposite this way it's red dots are easier to, to shoot with and then dial in the irons and then just shoot for the irons okay so that's what that's going to look like when I put the dot uh, my front side posts and obviously I still have to line up my irons correctly uh, inside the rear aperture All right. okay so that was the 50 yard zero we got ourselves dialed in like I said we did 10 shot at 50 dialed in for the 2-0 at 50 
I think we did it in about uh, 12 or 15 rounds. Think back to it, get everything dialed in. Uh, only took about a half an hour of our life, maybe 45 minutes with all the camera movement back and forth. I've seen this thing take hours. Okay? It doesn't have to take hours, but remember, your zero can only be as good as your fundamentals and marksmanship. The ability to shoot a tight group is important because your adjustments are based off that group. The closer to consistent that the groups are, meaning uh, shooting a one hole group or close to one whole group, now you know you're getting consistent marksmanship and then you make the adjustments off of that. Uh, so obviously you're going to have more accurate adjustments than if you have a, a baseball sized group and you're trying to adjust back and forth from there. You don't know uh, which way is up and which way is left or right. So fundamentals to get an accurate zero, work on those and as your fundamentals get better you can improve your zero. But it doesn't have to take hours and hours and it doesn't have to take a lot of jumping around. Just follow these steps to be laid out. Follow the math, trust the math as it's, as it's here and as you're finding it downrange and you find that it's quite easy to get your rifle dialed in. All right, thanks for watching the video. Come check us out at workmanfirearms.com or at workmanfirearms on Instagram. Thanks.